Let's talk the Harold the H. Ark, ark, ark. Give us an ark, ark, ark. Ark, ark, ark. Peacock, ark, ark, ark. He's going to tell us a very interesting story about an Ipswich family way back in 1918. G'day, Harold. Uh, yeah, good morning, Danny. Yeah, it's over 100 years ago, but just another story from the annals of Ipswich history. Yeah, well, let's get straight into it and uh, let's rip it into them. Yeah, look, look, and I'll never cease to be amazed that there are so many incredible people, and in this case, an entire family, that simply disappear from history. Mm. Now, it all starts with Ellen Hennessy. Now, she was born in County Tipperary Island in around 1850 right. during the Irish Famine. Right. Now, she arrived in Ipswich about 1870 and was staying with her brother mm. in Tiger Street, right. in West Ipswich, yeah. when she met another Irishman, Thomas McNulty. Mm. And so Ellen and Thomas got married in the old Catholic church on Mary Street, uh, where the uh, current St. Mary's church is today. Now, the couple then went seeking their fortune in far north Queensland and in 1879 mm. arrived on Thursday Island. Right. And that's where the McNulty's, the McNulty's entered folklore. Mm. You see, Thomas built the first licensed hotel on the island. Mm. It was called the Thursday Island Hotel. Mm. Now, after a fire, it was rebuilt as the present day Federal Hotel. Mm. Now, the Federal was at one time the only first class hotel in the Torres Strait. And in fact, I went to the hotel recently. It's lost a fair bit of its popularity, mm. Danny, but it's still a fantastic location right on the water. Wow. And being on the water, I think that was part of its attraction. You see, when the Catholic missionaries first came to the island, Mass was held in McNulty's Hotel. Right. The congregation was mostly Filipino pearl fishermen, and they came in their hundreds straight from their boats onto the beach and into the pub for Mass. <laughs> now, <laughs> when Thomas died, his wife, Ellen, Mm. the Switch family, Ellen continued in the trade. She even built the present Grand Hotel up on the hill. Mm. And I can tell you that the veranda of the Grand Hotel is the best place to sit at sunset and just watch the Thursday Island Harbour. It's mm. absolutely beautiful. Mm. Anyway, the McNulty children carried on the family business, mm. and the best known was the youngest daughter, Maggie McNulty. Now, she went to school down here at Oh Hallows Convent in Brisbane, she eventually sold the Federal Hotel but kept living there until she died as an 84-year-old spinster. Mm. And, Danny, that was the problem for Ipswich's McNulty family. You yeah. see, although Thomas and Ellen had five children yeah. who lived to adulthood, mm -hmm. none of them married and none of them had any children. Oh. And so the McNulty family, whose legend started here in Ipswich and blossomed on Thursday Island, was destined to end. What a great but, story. But, yeah, but, but the story continues. Yeah, it wasn't for want of trying, you mm. see, because they sent one one son, Jack, they sent him to school at Nudgee College in Brisbane, but no descendants came of that. Mm. But McNulty's even adopted the daughter of a Filipino fisherman who was killed while pearl diving. Mm. Now, the adopted daughter does have descendants possibly living over in Western Australia today, but there's none of the McNulty DNA there. Mm. Now, the great hope of the family was the oldest son, Edward McNulty. Now, Edward was a strong, good-looking young man. He enlisted for the Boer War, went over there. He then did garrison duty on Thursday Island. By the start of the First World War, he was in his late 30s and so lowered his age to enlist again. Right. But Edward, he had worked as a trader in New Guinea, and it was there that he caught a fever it probably saved his life because it stopped him from landing at Gallipoli. Mm. Now, instead, he was sent home to Thursday Island. Oh. And that's from, from there, that's when Edward joined the mounted police at Boralua. And Boralua is a remote community on the banks of the MacArthur River around on the Gulf of Carpentaria. Right. Now, while taking some prisoners to Darwin on a launch, yeah. Edward fell off the boat and disappeared. Oh, and Jesus. so ended the great hope of Ipswich's McNulty family. The family founders that survived the Irish famine, they came to Ipswich, became legends on Thursday Island, but none of their children had children. And their favourite son, he didn't just disappear, Danny. 
Edward was in fact probably taken by a crocodile. <laughs> and so this Edward family, <laughs> they ended in the jaws of a croc. Oh, you, um, you built it up with a crescendo. Oh. Absolutely brilliant, mate. So how can we find this story and all your other stories? Yeah, go online to historyoutthere.com. I'll have photos of the family and a lot more, a lot more detail of the family too, the Sipswich family that, like I say, has disappeared from history. Mm. But before before you before you send me off to the next library, Danny, to mm. research, mm. I want to give a shout-out to a loyal listener mm. from Muddy Creek in Victoria. Yeah. And he's Graham. And right now he's in hospital having an op. And so our prayers are with you, Graham. Yep. Get well soon. And I thoughts and prayers. You know, you notice they're saying that a lot lately. They don't say prayers anymore. Well, what's going on with the world? You know, what is going Anyhow, let's not get too political. This is this. I've been going off all morning. I'll need to go and see a doctor. Now, so historyoutthere.com. And don't forget to send in your ark, ark, arcs. Please give us an arc, 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 Zach. Yeah, we. Uh, uh, let Harold finish. Oh, Harold, yes, go yeah, on. Let Harold finish. Oh, on. no, look, I was, I, was, I was just saying, if, if uh, Damien is on assignment up in Toowoomba, surely he can get some arc, 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 some up Absolutely. on the range. He there, should he? get him off the local mayor, Jeff. Oh, by the way, while we talk about that, Jeff McDonald, the mayor, uh, his dad, uh, John Cracker McDonald, passed away last week, who uh, oh, you know, was the first yeah. state of origin coach. Crackers McDonald played for Australia. It was the captain of Manly in 1970 when they won the premiership. Uh, it's, it's a Toowoomba boy. So our thoughts and prayers to the McDonald family and to you, Jeff, and good luck with the Carnival of Flowers. So historyoutthere.com. Send in your ark, ark, arks. Good on you. You there? Thanks, Danny. I'm uh, looking forward to the story next week. Don't know what it's about, but it'll be good. You're the greatest builder I've ever met <laughs> of words. You're a word builder. That was Harold the H. Peacock on West Bremer Radio. It's 821.